The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. I'm Philip Curry. I'm an associate provost. There are several of us, and, and I'm sure there are a couple hanging around in this room. But I'm here because I have the great privilege of, how to put it, having OCW, if you can imagine, report up to me. So I know a little about this organization, uh, but to say that it reports up to me is a bit of an exaggeration. I, I do try to help out where I can, but as you know, it is a remarkable, remarkable group, and I'll talk about that group in a second. Now, we're here to celebrate 10 years of OCW, and it has been truly a fabulous 10 years, a fabulous 10 years. We gather to celebrate one of MIT's most remarkable achievements in the past decade. One could arguably, one could argue that OCW is the most important achievement that MIT has experienced, helped to create, put on the map in the last decade. The publication of our entire curriculum, 2,000 courses, subjects, as they used to be called, maybe they still are, at MIT, on our website, on the MIT website, for the entire world to see and utilize. It's MIT's great gift to the world. Now, the OCW program exemplifies MIT's deeply and widely held commitment to serve both the nation and the world, the nation and the world. OCW is a very important part of MIT's international engagement, MIT's strategy for engaging with the rest of the world. And if I may say so, OCW is an exemplar of MIT's strategy. And it was created before we even were able to formalize a strategy. I should also add that today, whenever I travel in Asia, the Middle East, Europe, elsewhere, I hear more than any other name, OCW, apart from MIT itself. In fact, one could say, one could say that after the acronym MIT, I would argue it, worldwide, OCW is the most popular, famous acronym we have. And that's done in a short decade. That's quite remarkable. Okay. Simply put, education is the foundation of our ability to address our world's greatest challenges, and the better educated we are as a world, the more successfully we'll meet these challenges, challenges that OCW is helping to find solutions to. We hear more about the various impacts of this project, but we will hear more about the various impacts of this project, but our best estimate put the number of individuals who've accessed MIT material through OCW at around 100 million folks. And I got on the website the other day, and the aim, the goal, is to reach a billion in the next decade. Now, that may be a little ambitious, but why not? There are certainly at least a billion folks who would want to know about OCW. Many of these 100 million who've accessed it are people for whom no other educational opportunities exist at this level. Others are educators struggling at under-resourced and overburdened universities around the world. We've got to remember how privileged we are at this institution of ours, this great institution, when we look around and see how others live at other institutions. And still others are students who are able to learn more successfully by pairing our materials with those they receive at their, uh, in their own courses. It's not always obvious at MIT that, about the impact of OCW or it's what it's had around the world. We don't always recognize it, perhaps in the way we should, not just in helping to improve education, but by inspiring institutions to rethink their role in the online environment. Since MIT launched OpenCourseWare, the program, hundreds of other universities have joined OCW in sharing their curriculum. MIT today is now a small part of a large global movement, a global movement MIT created and still leads. OCW has also influenced the thinking of governments, policymakers, and granters here in the United States and around the world. 
The Department of Education has programs explicitly focused on the creation of additional open educational resources. The Gates Foundation, the largest foundation in the world, includes open courseware in the next generation learning challenges, in its next generation learning challenges, that is. Governments including China, Vietnam, the Netherlands, Indonesia, include OCW in national education policy. It speaks bundles about what MIT and OCW are all about. Because I personally have the privilege of overseeing OCW's operation, I've had a pleasure of seeing firsthand how Cecilia D'Olivera and her team, her staff, have made this organization bloom. She's not the first to lead it. I saw Anne Margulis here, and we're delighted this young lady helped to take us forward in the beginning, and Cece took over when Anne, alas, left us for the State House, I believe, at the time. But, you know, the team that you helped create, Anne, and that Cease has built up in your absence since your departure has just been fabulous. And I want to li lift my glass. Alas, it's only water, but, <laughs> but maybe it's safer. To OCW and its staff, please, a round of applause. Here, here. Cheers. Yeah. Okay. Earlier this year, OCW was mentioned in The Economist magazine as a prime example of how universities are engaging internationally, a characterization I found extraordinary. MIT does not have satellite campuses or distance learning programs as such, and yet through OpenCourseWare we've lit a beacon that truly does shine worldwide, providing resources and setting an example for the role of the university in the digital age, and we'll only hear and see more about that. And all of this is due to individual acts, individual acts of generosity by the faculty at MIT. So we don't only wish to honor the OCW staff this evening, we also want to honor those acts of generosity that flow from our amazing MIT faculty who have enabled us to make this great institution of OCW shine so bright around the world. So with your permission, may I lift my glass of water one more time to the great MIT faculty who helped this make this person, yes. I see some faculty out there. I know you somewhere. I know you're blushing. <laughs> so let me now turn over the evening to Cease D'Olivera, our amazing executive director of OCW. Thank you very much, Philip. And um, I would encourage anybody who uh, can't see this monitor to maybe move down here. There's some chairs here. Uh, I'm going to do a slideshow. Uh, I, I, told, I was told I have 10 minutes to cover 10 years of OCW history. So I am going to fly through my slides, and you're probably going to want to see them if you can. We also have a couple of monitors set up, uh, one in the back there, one in the room over there, uh, in case you can't get a good, a good view. Okay, well, first of all, thank you for coming. The weather wasn't quite what we had planned, uh, but that we couldn't control. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you to celebrate <clears throat> this wonderful anniversary. Uh, and as a warm-up to uh, some remarks that Dick Yu and Hazel Siv are going to make uh, later, what I want to do now is recap 10 years of OCW in about 10 minutes, which means I'm going to capture, I'm going to try to capture the essence, if not, the actual full history of the program. And if I miss something that you think is really important, come tell me later, I apologize. There was a lot I had to cut out. So the OCW story begins in the late 1990s, and so I'm gonna take you back through the time tunnel and remind you that it was a time of, of uh, great excitement in terms of the internet. Uh, many people saw a gold rush mentality uh, at that point, and educational institutions weren't immune to that. Uh, back in, in that period of time, several of them, some peers, Stanford, Columbia, Yale, had actually announced some online programs. Uh, and at least one of those was a for-profit. So MIT, like many of its peers at that time, was struggling with some big questions. Uh, what, you know, how should the internet, what, how will the internet change education, and what should MIT do about that? In 1999, these questions were assigned to a small group 
of very smart MIT faculty and staff who were asked to examine whether MIT should start a distance learning program. Through the summer of 2000, this small group struggled with the issue, and they eventually became convinced that such a venture was not consistent with MIT, with MIT's mission, and it wasn't even likely to generate revenues to cover costs. But this understanding didn't translate into what MIT should do. The legend, and you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, is that the idea of OpenCourseWare came to one of the committee members uh, while he was doing his morning exercise. Uh, and it was an idea that was as straightforward as it was revolutionary, as we like to say. Uh, why not use the internet to give away MIT's course materials? The proposal that took shape around that idea was very characteristic of MIT. It was big, it was bold, and it was an effort that was going to involve the entire academic community. The committee felt that MIT shouldn't just publish the courses, uh, a few sample courses or courses from MIT's most well-known programs, uh, but that the best way to share our intellectual wealth was really to share materials from all courses, uh, to throw open the vaults uh, that held MIT's academic treasure. And with the strong backing of President Vest and Provost Brown, the committee consulted widely with faculty across the institute and a consensus formed around this idea. A Florentine omelet played a major role in OCW's history. The breakfast that uh, President Vest reportedly had the day that he discussed the possibility of funding with William Bowen of the Mellon Foundation. Uh, and Mellon was later joined by Hewlett Foundation as the primary financial supporters with MIT of OCW. It was a very public proposal, announced on the front page of the New York Times exactly 10 years ago today. And if you haven't seen the copy of the front page of the Times, we actually got a copy, we ordered a copy, it's over there. Uh, on your way out, you can, you'll pass by it. So with a great idea and with some funding in hand, a faculty implementation committee that was chaired by Steve Lerman set out to hire a staff and to find a few pioneers among the faculty who were willing to try out this wild idea. Some of you are actually in the room tonight, I know. Uh, and we've got a list here of everyone who participated in the initial pilot. And I'm sorry I don't have time to, to read all of those. And I'm sorry the font is so small. Uh, the pilot site was launched in September of 2002 to worldwide acclaim. MIT built on that success, developing an organization which was led by Ann Margulies, uh, OCW's first executive director, that recruited additional faculty, that put in place the processes and the systems that we were going to need to increase the size of the site by an order of magnitude in a year. Officially, uh, we met the goal, officially launching that site with materials from 500 courses in October of 2003. That month, we received over 300,000 visits from people around the world. We were inundated by email from users thanking the faculty and sharing their joy. The first email that we have in our files came from a student in China shortly after the launch, and it demonstrated the program's immediate global power and appeal. And he wasn't alone. The thousands of visitors grew into millions more than seven million in, seven, in 2006 alone. Visitors came to OCW from every country and region on the planet. We recorded visits from Antarctica, the Vatican, Mauritius, Suriname. I was disappointed we didn't get anything from the space station. OCW was visited more from outside the US than from within, and it quickly, as Philip said, became one of the main international faces of the Institute. Demand for OCW materials internationally quickly led to translations of the materials. Today, there are close to 1,000 courses that have been translated uh, by official translation affiliates, and many, many more by unofficial, uh, uh, many, many more unofficial translations. Users also wanted new ways of accessing OCW content, so we started providing what we called mirror sites, uh, that's copies of our site on a hard drive to bandwidth uh, constrained regions of the world. That was in 2005. We now have about 250 of these, primarily in uh, Africa, and that's growing every month. We began distributing our videos through iTunes University in 2007 when Apple launched that site, 
and we followed that with YouTube and several other sites here in the US and abroad. Uh, these course videos that we put up became some of our most effective tools in building awareness of the program. Millions of visitors have come to OCW or these sites to view popular courses by MIT faculty, such as Eric Grimson and John Gutag, whose OCW site last month received 100,000 visits. Walter Lewin, who I think, I haven't seen Walter, but I heard he's in house tonight. Where's Walter? Who, as you all know, his physics lectures on OCW have inspired millions of people around the world. And uh, we hear from those people every week. Um, thank you very much, Walter. And Gil Strang, whose linear algebra course was one of the first 50 courses that we put up. And since 2002, it's been on the top 10 most visited courses list for OCW. And I think Gil's here somewhere, too. Uh, Kathy Drennan teaches freshman chemistry, uh, has, a, has a video that's on the top, in the top 20. And Don Sadaway, who I was hoping would be here, but uh, I don't see Don, uh, whose worldwide audience included Bill Gates, who sent, him a, a memorable, sent a memorable email to us in 2008 to say how much he enjoyed Don's course, uh, course videos. It took us a few days to really figure out, is this really Bill Gates or not? This is a... And it was. And he's talked about it subsequently in public. In coming to OCW or these other sites to view uh, lectures from these professors, OCW visitors have discovered the full richness of MIT's academic offerings. And they've explored the content and ideas they otherwise might never have seen. By 2007, MIT had published 1,800 courses, nearly all of the MIT curriculum, delivering on the original vision of the committee from the year 2000. Since 2007, we've continued to add and update content, and the site now includes about 2,060 courses, plus a rich collection of supplemental resources. And we've been at work on a set of new initiatives that we hope are going to significantly increase the impact and reach of OCW in the next decade. I'll talk about that more in a minute. The 7 million annual visits that we had in 2006 grew to 13 million, then to 15 million, and last year we had uh, welcomed 17 and a half million visits to the OCW site. These new visitors are every bit of, as enthusiastic as the early ones. Um, since that 2003 launch, we've received almost 44,000 electronic mails. Uh, one of the most recent ones came in from an educator in the U.S. talking about the potential he sees in OCW. And this is, an ex this is his words. Hearing how these visitors use OCW helps us understand the impact of OCW. A professor at a liberal arts college in Indiana used OCW to develop a computer programming course for freshmen. An engineering student in Mexico used OCW for his own studies and to develop project-based learning opportunities for first-year students, sort of enrichment things that he organized. A solar energy entrepreneur from Haiti used OCW to learn the fundamentals of integrated circuits as part of his research and development in building solar uh, lighting, which he ultimately did and which uh, he now has a very successful business. We've heard other compelling stories from countless others including a high school math teacher in Maine, a physics professor in Guatemala, an engineering grad student in Pakistan, an undergraduate in Nigeria, a project manager from Bahrain, a captain in the US uh, Navy, and an MIT freshman from Texas named Matt Peterson, who's here tonight, who told, us, told me in a freshman seminar last fall that without OCW, he might not have ever considered applying to MIT. Matt, where are you? <laughs> these uses, these uses of OCW vary widely, but all of these users have found great value in having access to the same materials, by and large, that our faculty use to teach students on our campus day in and day out. 
In all, we estimate that between the OCW site, our translation sites, redistribution through channels like iTunes U and YouTube, uh, and conservative calculations about the students that have seen our materials as their teacher brought these materials into their classrooms, we think we've reached 100 million individuals in the last 10 years. And, and I expect if we asked any of the original committee members in the room what, whether they thought that that was possible, they would have said that was absolutely unimaginable. OCW has also influenced other institutions to rethink uh, their role in the online world. Philip ta talked about this a bit. Uh, as soon as we launched OCW, a number of other uh, schools came to us interested in starting their own open course, whereas these were leading schools in the US like Johns Hopkins, Tufts, uh, Notre Dame, and top schools in Japan and China and Europe. Hundreds have since joined us in sharing their content, and nearly 250 of them now collaborate uh, through the OCW Consortium, which will be holding its annual conference here in the MIT campus uh, in May, in case you're interested. And the educational strategies and uh, practices of governments, of policymakers, of funders, of individual institutions are increasingly influenced by OCW and by open educational resources. Hundreds of articles about OCW have appeared in the media over the last 10 years. I'm sure you're aware of that. And that's helped to raise the awareness of the program, uh, get the word out to, to new people. It's also increased awareness of the impact. Uh, and, and it's also showcased the quality of the faculty we have here and uh, the curriculum. And by the way, Chris Merlin, we also got a mention in Oprah, Oprah's magazine. <laughs> That's the big O. <laughs> OpenCourseWare has also received numerous awards over the years in recognition of the impact that MIT has had on global education and on the sharing of uh, knowledge. Our 2010 awards give you a flavor of that. It included Science Magazine's uh, Science Prize for Online Resources and Education, Time uh, Magazine's 50 Best Websites of 2010, and the Cutters Foundation's uh, annual Laureate Award, uh, they call the WISE Award. As open sharing of knowledge becomes more widespread in education, MIT continues to stand apart as the institution that had the confidence to share its entire curriculum at a time when others found the idea absolutely inconceivable. None of this would have been possible without the generosity of the faculty and other teaching staff and the many MIT students who contributed their materials. And we honor them tonight. Thank you. But we've, we've, also, we've also benefited from the support of two uh, consecutive administrations in both uh, Chuck Vest and Susan Hockfield and Bob Brown and Raphael have been extremely supportive and essential to our success. OCW wouldn't have succeeded without the wisdom and the vision and the guidance of our faculty advisory committee who devoted countless hours to shepherding the project since the beginning. And beyond them, without the support of individual faculty who have been so generous with their time whenever someone on the OCW staff asked for advice or assistance. And OCW wouldn't have been possible without the many organizations that joined MIT in funding OpenCourseWare, uh, providing financial and other kinds of uh, support for the program. And we wouldn't have been successful without the excellent work and the amazing dedication of former and current o OCW staff members who are here, some of whom are here tonight, who turned the vision into a reality. So thank all of you. Thank you very much. So I'm, I'm almost done, and I know my 10 minutes has turned into more like 15, uh, which I knew was going to happen. Uh, but what I want to end with is uh, giving you a, a sense of what we're thinking about uh, in terms of the future uh, directions of OpenCourseWare. With the support of the faculty, uh, the students, and the administration, we're really looking forward to the next 10 years. Uh, working with our faculty advisory committee, we've developed a roadmap we call our roadmap for innovation for the next decade. Our core mission stays the same, and that's publishing MIT's course materials. But we want to figure out how to increase the impact of OCW significantly. We've identified four focus areas, building learning communities around the material, 
reaching out to key audiences, sharing our content more widely, and focusing on educators as a key multiplier. We've got a number of initiatives already underway. I won't go through all of them, but let me give you a sense of, of the kind of things that we're, we're doing. In 2010, we began building online learning communities, open learning communities, in collaboration with Open Study. We now have 12,000 people participating in those uh, 12 study groups that we set up, which is an amazing number. Uh, one of the study groups, I think, has 6,000 people. I think it's the 600 course. This January, we launched the first of what will ultimately be 20 courses that we're calling OCW Scholar. These are relatively complete foundation level courses that have been designed specifically to support the needs of independent learners who are a large uh, percentage, like 40% or so of our user group. And this is with uh, funding from the Stanton Foundation. Our Highlights for High School site, which we originally launched in 2007, was designed to serve high school students and teachers. Uh, in March, just last month, MIT uh, announced a collaboration with the department, between the Department of Chemistry and Dow Chemical to enhance the Highlights for High School site with materials that are going to inspire chemistry interest among high school students and teachers. So that's a multi-year collaboration that we're just getting off the ground now. In February, in collaboration with a small for-profit called Erinsoft, we announced a mobile app. This is our first uh, foray into the mobile field. It's called OCW Lecture Hall, and if you have an iPhone, you c it's a free app that you can find in the store. It's going to be, I think it's available for the Droid, or if it's not, it'll be available shortly. This allows for easy uh, downloads of OCW, but you can do more than just download video. You can take notes, you can participate in forums, you can review the videos, and uh, et cetera. And finally, we recently began discussions, I think there's a huge opportunity here, with Wikipedia, some folks with Wikipedia, about the idea of adding OCW video content to Wikipedia entries with crosslinks back to the OCW site. Now, if you go to Wikipedia and you search Newton's Laws, uh, you will see this example. And th that's a Walter Lewin clip uh, down at the bottom there. So what's our goal in the next decade? Philip kind of gave it away at the beginning, but let me just say it again. Our goal is to increase our impact by an order of magnitude, and that means if we reached 100 million people in the first 10 years, we want to reach a billion over the next 10 years. If a, if a million educators have already brought our content into their classrooms, and that's, not, that's a pretty conservative estimate, we'd like to help 10 million more do the same. It's a huge reach, but it's one that is going to challenge us to keep innovating and keep moving forward as we continue this great journey, which MIT began 10 years ago. Thank you. And I'm not sure where Philip went, but do you want me to introduce Dick? OK. So um, you all probably know Professor Dick Yu. Uh, Dick was the chair of the uh, small committee that I talked about that came up with the idea of OpenCourseWare. He's also been continued to be involved through our faculty advisory committee for the last 10 years. And uh, in the sort of on the side while he's doing other important things for MIT. So, Dick. Since Cease took a lot more than her 10 minutes, um, I should take a lot less of my five minutes. So I'll, I'll keep my remarks really very short indeed. I'm, I'm here to represent the faculty and in particular the Faculty Advisory uh, Committee uh, in welcoming you and thanking you for coming to share in this celebration tonight. Um, as I think about it, Forrest Gump once said that life is like a box of chocolates. And what does that have to do with OCW? Well, OCW sort of is related to boxes of chocolates because most of you who know me personally know uh, my wife and I had this great love for sweets and an abhorrence for exercise. Uh, but the first love created a need for the second appearance, and that explains the exercise uh, treadmill or bicycle you saw, you see. So it has something to do with coming up with an idea like OpenCourseWare. Uh, namely, I was struggling 
uh, not so much with the treadmill, but with the idea of what is it that MIT faculty could do. And uh, I'm really grateful uh, tonight for all of the faculty who are here. Uh, I think open courseware's credit really belongs to all of you. Um, it represents your dedication, your generosity, uh, your belief in education over many personal and selfish reasons and needs. And so for that, I want to just thank you, uh, all of you. It's one thing to come up with an idea or formulate a vision. It's quite another thing to have that vision come into fruition through the mobilization of an entire community, not just the talents and the dedication and the generosity of the faculty I just mentioned, but also uh, extremely dedicated, talented, and organized staff. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, Cease and her predecessor, Anne Margulies, and the very, very hardworking OCW staff, uh, who many of them are here. So again, thank you. I, I didn't know that Steve was going to uh, reprint that email uh, that's, in your, uh, that's inserted. Uh, but I'm now glad, to, I'm relieved to learn today that he actually had Chuck's permission. Uh, of course, when I gave it to him, I just said, sure, if you want to use it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where you're going to use it, but feel free to do that. Um, I think uh, the other big credit of OCW goes to, in addition to the faculty, goes to uh, the senior administration, though uh, both the previous one and the current one, for the kind of uh, patience, forbearance, resources, uh, in, in many ways, courage uh, that was required and is required to shepherd a program like OCW from its very beginning uh, to where it is today. And I don't know how many C administration are here other than Philip Corey and et al., but for that, I think we deserve to give our bosses a, a hearty thank you for what they have done for, for MIT and for the program. Uh, OCW was not inexpensive. Uh, I remember that in the early days we were trying to come up with a figure, and I always believed that you should never lowball a potential sponsor. So we tried to be as conservative as possible, and the number floating around at that time was $100 million. And I still remember Hal Abelson and I going down to see the president of Mellon Foundation the day before Thanksgiving. Uh, in Princeton, that's his home, that's not where he normally works. Uh, Bill Bowen usually works in New York City. And I wasn't naive, I figured, you know, if we're really lucky and we got a million dollars on a trip like this, you know, Thanksgiving Eve traffic and all, uh, maybe after a hundred trips like this of people like ourselves and, you know, everybody else, we might gather what's required. And it turned out that at the end of our presentation, Bill said, you know, guys, Things get complicated when lots of people are involved. Why don't you give us a chance to respond before you ask someone else? Um, that was the last time I actually saw Bill Bowen again until he came to celebrate, I think, a thousand courses being published. So uh, thank you, Bill Bowen and uh, Mellon Foundation and Hewlett Foundation and Stanton Foundation and Ab Initial Corporation and in addition, many thousands uh, smaller but no less important uh, donors and benefactors of OCW, so thank you. Um, I, I came in and I saw the name of Kyun Han, and I don't know if he's here or not, uh, he, he's there. And uh, there are some unsung heroes, and I want to acknowledge again Kyun Han, Reggie Van Lee, and uh, Bruce Allen Hamilton, who supported the original committee with really very good analysis that helped us made a rather difficult decision as to what to do. So in case you think that OpenCourseWare was just sort of a um, sudden, you know, out of blue, eureka kind of a uh, call, it wasn't. It was really actually a very careful, thoughtful uh, economic and organizational analysis made possible by the hard work of Kuhn and his friends who were helping us at that time. So again, thank you.
Um, I'm a dreamer. Many of us were dreamers on that committee. And we dreamed big. We had a big vision. But as C's probably alluded to it, uh, what we have, where OCW is today, way exceeded our original vision or our dreams. Uh, I would not repeat, or maybe I should repeat, some of the uh, statistics that C's had mentioned. He, she's mentioned a lot. Uh, possibly 100 million people. Um, uh, over 2,000 courses. Um, at one point, 90% of MIT faculty uh, was participating. And I think it was Susan Hoffier who said he, she couldn't think of another activity that MIT faculty all do uh, that has that kind of percentages other than, other than cashing their paychecks. <laughs> and I want to add that we don't cash our paychecks anymore, anyway. <laughs> They're all direct deposits. Uh, um, there had been uh, many translations. Uh, it's not so much that people wanted to translate MIT material, but the opportunity that these translations offer for MIT to have an impact beyond its immediate, immediate environs that's truly significant. So when you think of a translation into um, Spanish, think Latin America. If you think about a translation into Chinese, uh, think 1.3 billion. And I think if you start thinking like that, and you know the six, I think C's mentioned six official translation, uh, perhaps a dozen unofficial ones, and the thousands of courses that's represented, the impact is really quite significant in terms of MIT's reach uh, far and wide. Um, I'll tell you two personal stories about that impact. One was one day my daughter, Emily, she's in 11th grade in, in high school, came home and said, Papa, Alexandra says that you are her favorite teacher. I said, wait, wait, I don't even teach at your high school, right? <laughs> Alexandra is cute and all that, but how does she know even who I was, right? Turns out Alexandra was uh, going to MIT Open Courseware and helping her with her classwork. And Alexandra is one of the top, top students and she's doing extremely well. And she somehow figured out the connection between Emily and me and Open Courseware and wanted to make sure that, so, so my daughter is popular as a result of that, you see? <laughs> or, or, or because of these boxes of chocolates, you see? <laughs> I'll share with you another story, which is actually uh, another very poignant. I, I do not teach a big class or a popular one, uh, as some of the ones that C's mentioned. I'm, I'm no Walter Lewin or Gil Strang, uh, far from it. I teach a relatively small class. Uh, but recently I ran into some former students and colleagues from Taiwan, right? And it started because they say, you know, this textbook that we use, it's getting awfully hard to get. It's very expensive, right? And I just found out, he said, okay, that almost all the classes in this first year marine hydrodynamics that's being taught in the universities in Taiwan, they are all using the MIT course notes that I wrote to teach in lieu of the textbook. They say they didn't even need the textbook, okay, right? And I'm just tickled to death that one day, you know, because I use A for added mass and not mu, maybe the entire Taiwan graduate population in naval architecture would use A and not mu. Think about that information, think about the impact of that, right? So just take your course and do the similar kind of thinking. Um, anyway, so I, again, I said I would not take a lot of time. Um, um, there are many, many uh, things to share and, and to, to sort of uh, uh, congratulate each other about. Uh, I think I really wanted to come back to where uh, CIS uh, ended, namely that uh, where should OCW potentially go, right? And the faculty uh, advisory committee of which I'm a member, uh, and Shiguru is chair, unfortunately Shiguru couldn't be here and he wanted me personally to express his his very warm sentiments to all of you. Uh, we've, been, we've been working with the staff and thinking hard, right? And I'm tickled to death about the possibility that MIT could truly uh, impact a, a big portion, a good fraction of the population of the world, if indeed we could reach a billion people, right? If we could reach 10 million teachers. Uh, and I just wanted to say to all of you who had uh, contributed so much to the where MIT OCW is today. I wanted to invite all of you to join OCW again through your talents and your gifts and um, 
both intellectual and personal gifts, to again help MIT OCW to reach these no, new goals. And I think they will be, OCW will be calling on all of us to again maybe step forward to do something interesting or difficult to help that cause. And I'd like to um, not end by just saying thank you, but please, uh, at the same time, looking forward to where we would go with OCW. Um, Cease mentioned uh, some pilot projects and ideas, and I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, uh, recognize uh, Hazel Siv, who is also on the faculty advisory committee of OCW, who would come up now and share uh, more personally about some of her ideas and the ideas that she's familiar about uh, that involves around open courseware. So Hazel. Well, thank you so much, Dick. It's interesting, I'm so very honored to be here and be included in this celebration, but really I am very naive about open courseware. I'll tell you where I'm not naive, but mostly I'm here as a faculty member telling you about what open courseware has meant to me and how I first came to know about it and where I am now in my understanding of where open courseware is going forward. And I suppose I'm going to touch on three things, although I kind of feel the lateness of the day, and it's been a long day for me, and I'm sure it's been a long day for you. But I will tell you, you know, what I have planned, and then we'll see where it goes, which is to tell you that I'll talk to you about being a faculty member in OCW. I'll talk to you about being a representative of the School of Science. I'm Associate Dean and OCW, and I'll talk to you about being a member of the Open Courseware Faculty Advisory Board. You know, I remember when I first heard of Open Courseware, someone came to me and asked if I would put my notes for 722, which is Undergraduate Developmental Biology. It's a niche course on the web. And I was really taken aback because this was a course that I was developing myself. I was struggling with the material and how to teach it. And I was really quite reluctant to put the material up there for everyone to see when I felt it was still undergoing its own ontogeny. But I did because it was an expectation. I checked it really carefully to make sure that I didn't put something wrong up there for my colleagues to see. And then I moved on to the other course that I was teaching at the time. And that was what I knew about open courseware until a faculty meeting where Anne Margulis and Steve Lerman reported on the progress in gathering and collating courses and putting them up on open courseware. And I sat there, I think the tally was about 900 at the time. And I remember sitting there, it was one of the first MIT faculty meetings I'd ever been to. And I remember sitting there thinking, wow, other people have bared their souls and put their material up for everyone to see and find their mistakes and see their secrets of teaching and their problem sets that they have put so much creativity into and their exam questions and so on. And so many faculty have done it and there was a trajectory to get all of the courses. And it actually made me think a lot about something that I really enjoy thinking about, which is what it means to be a university professor and what it means to be part of the great academic tradition. And it seemed to me really that what we were doing with open courseware was deeply entrenched in the academic tradition of finding knowledge, of interpreting knowledge, of disseminating knowledge, being the keepers and the teachers of knowledge, and that really what we were doing through open courseware was kind of a pure thing. There was a pure pedagogy that we were willing to share. And I thought that it was interesting, although it was so technologically current, that the principles of sharing our knowledge and our way of thinking and teaching were really very ancient and a really wonderful way to communicate the mantle of academia and the mantle of teaching that we all carry and that is one of the so wonderful things of being part of an academic community. One of the things that OpenCourseWare does is to teach the GIRs, 
the general institute requirements, so dreaded and loved in a kind of masochistic way by our undergraduates. And many of the GIRs, apart from the important humanities GIRs, or most of them, are science courses. And in the School of Science, of course, we're very proud of the GIRs and the way they're taught, and we're very proud of the way they're represented on open courseware. I wouldn't dare go to where the rock stars of our faculty are in open courseware. You've heard them cited a number of times. There are lots of rock stars whose work is viewed very often. Most of them are in the General Institute requirements. And it's really fantastic to see that, as Cease mentioned, some of these courses being expanded and reworked through the Stanton Project to make the GIRs even more accessible to even more students across the world. And then, some years ago, when I became Associate Dean, I also joined the OCW Faculty Advisory Board. And I have to tell you honestly, I thought, oh boy, here's another, another task that I have to do, <laughs> another committee to sit on. But I have to tell you honestly that the OCW Faculty Advisory Board is a really fantastic committee. And if any of you are ever asked to sit on it, I would strongly advise you to say yes, because it's one of those committees where you sit with a group of people the Open Courseware director, who is really extraordinary, Cis Oliveira, really an extraordinary thinker, a very open mind, the fantastic staff that she has working with her, and of course the fantastic faculty who are sitting around thinking about Open Courseware and where it is and where it should go. And it's been an absolute delight and terribly interesting to sit with this group of people thinking about where open courseware is and where open courseware should go. And it comes back to this theme that I mentioned before, that the communication of knowledge that we do can be framed in as current ways as we can. We can Facebook, we can whatever, we can droid, we can do, you know, whatever is the current way of communicating. But the underlying principles of pedagogy that we do so well at MIT, that we're so proud of, I think always embody how open courseware will go forward. And as a faculty member, that really is the thing that comes back to me. And being part of the faculty advisory board reinforces also the power that we have in thinking about how to teach, who we teach, and how to move forward. It's a real honor to be here and speak to you and congratulate OpenCourseWare. I think the next 10 years are going to be really interesting and just as important as the last 10 years. Happy birthday, OpenCourseWare. So there's little I can add to these fabulous speakers, Hazel, Dick, and Cease. But let me just say, there were surprises in the first 10 years, and they were fabulous surprises. There's no reason to expect other than more surprises of the fabulous kind in the next decade. So I no longer have a glass, but I lift two hands <laughs> in salute to the staff of OCW who make this world go round for us, and to the faculty whose intellectual input is so crucial. This is you know, the best of MIT, and there's a heck of a lot that's great at MIT, but this really is the best. So congratulations to you all, and uh, we'll party until around eight. <laughs> yeah.